Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. My fellow Americans, our nation is facing a plague. A plague that's afflicting millions of Americans and threatening to unravel the very fiber of our culture. This plague I'm speaking about is the digression from civil discourse. As technology becomes more deeply entwined in our daily lives, it's allowed us to disconnect from real human interaction and enter these virtual worlds where we can say whatever we want to say and only hear what we want to hear. Every time we turn a blind eye to someone we disagree with or identify ourselves as anti-something, our nation becomes more and more divided. And this polarization is harmful to our society. Politics becomes this series of petty power struggles. Families turn their backs on each other and neighbors build walls. But every time we reach out to those who oppose us and engage in civilized conversation, then we uphold our democracy. We strengthen our family bonds and we love our neighbors. We become more equipped to face the challenges of our nation and to find solutions that benefit all of us. How did it come to this? How did we digress from civil discourse? The most powerful driver is the use of technology in our daily lives. It affects how we interact with each other. When our virtual identities represent us increasingly more than our physical presence, we can hide behind the veil of a glowing screen. We are empowered by anonymity and cast stones more readily and with more force than we would dare do if we were standing face to face with our opponent. As social media sites have grown over the last decade, so has cyberbullying and other forms of online harassment. Our virtual selves are more brazen and less accountable. Technology also affects what it is we interact with. Companies are tracking us online, watching what we buy, what we like, what we dislike, and forming profiles that dictate the type of content we see going forward. So this doesn't seem like that big of a deal, but it's, it's altering our world views. So every time we interact with the content we see, we get served more of that same type of content. These closed feedback loops continue to show us evidence that supports our own worldview and filters out opposing views. And technology affects who is heard. Social media sites and any site that allows comments are really breeding grounds for drama. The negative messages are shared and amplified across the web. The situation is further deteriorated by our current political climate. Fear-mongering politicians and political activists want us to believe that anyone who has a different opinion is our enemy, that people who are opposed to us are out to do us harm. And that type of rhetoric is dangerous. It puts a barrier on civil discourse. It makes us feel like we need to choose one side or the other or sit out of the conversation entirely. Now is not the time to dwell on our differences or to sit on the sidelines. Now is the time to take responsibility for our own civility. We can look to politicians or businesses or the news, but it's on us 
as citizens of these states of America and as humans from any province around the world. Today, I implore each of you to reach out to someone who you disagree with and make it your goal to understand their perspective. If each of us can shed these brazen online personas and approach our opponent with humility and respect, if each of us can step outside of that feedback loop and open our minds to a different point of view, and if we can each rise above that negative rhetoric and hold others accountable, then we can overcome this plague. Civil discourse can make our nation great again. I actually wanted to evaluate Caitlin. I spoke to our president about it this week, but didn't know how to do it on not easy speak. Caitlin, you are a speechwriter professional. <laughs> I have to hear more about that. But you are a speech deliverer excellently today. Her talk was number three, get to the point. And then get to the point, you're supposed to pick a purpose, inform, persuade, entertain, or inspire. And it appears to me she was informing us about civil discourse and inspiring us to do something about it. She did that beautifully. And part of the speech goals were to control nervousness and to minimize the use of notes which she also did extremely well. Her opener, talking about a plague, very dramatically and very passionately, and then defining it as civil discourse, was powerful. It didn't quite, by the middle of the speech, seem that it was stated as clearly as it could be for a purpose for a speech. She didn't say, my purpose is. But she embodied that as she talked about the bullying on, and negative speaking on all the technology that we have. She tied that in very well. She was extremely well prepared. And her delivery for a number three, walking around the approved space and eye contact with people and vocal variety was fantastic. In that speech writing, you must also give people speech giving suggestions. A couple suggestions about controlling the nervousness. I love your hair. I covet your hair. I <laughs> hair because I've never been able to grow my hair. But occasionally, the movements that you do with that draws our attention to that and away from your voice. You are very calm. And you had notes. For a number three, it says fine to have notes, just minimal. You turned them once and still made eye contact with us. That was beautiful. Your final uh, call for us to use the internet and avoid the negativity that happens on some websites with humility and respect was a fabulous tie up to the speech. I don't have any more negative to say, and I won't put on any piece of discussion online. I'll just congratulate you and look forward to seven more speeches. Yay. Mm -hmm. Thank you.